sitting here warming up, you know, so my hips are tight, my back hurts, my squat sucks, you know, I stretch all the time, but it seems to be not working. What, what could I possibly be doing wrong, you know? Let's start it from the top. Stretching is as important as any exercise you will ever do, right? Because we, we need to be able to keep our muscles long and relaxed and all of that. So important keys to stretching, number one, are breathing and bracing. So I'm not gonna slouch here. We're, we're trying to change our structure. So why would we ever do that in poor posture? So posture up, breathe in, push all your air down right away. We're in a better alignment, okay? Still, I'm not stretching because I have no leverage on the muscle. Key number two, find leverage. Now, what's a better stretch for this muscle of interest, the adductors? Let's say I just come right on forward over the top into a simple frog position, right? My knees are as wide as they'll let them. My hands are as far from my hips as my shoulders are, right? My ankles are gonna be as wide as my knees are. Simple frog stretch position. Now I have leverage on the muscle. I'm breathing, I'm bracing, and I'm actually feeling something happen here, right? So that's key number two, leverage. Key number three, I'll use another stretch as an example for a concept known as reciprocal inhibition, right? Now, the simple and short explanation for that is if I were to contract my bicep, my tricep has to relax for that, clo uh, for that joint angle to close, right? If I were in turn to contract my tricep, the bicep has to relax to allow that joint angle to lengthen, right? So, if I were to get into a simple straddle position, stretching out my hamstrings, I'm going to use my leverage because my body is heavy, my hips are tense, they love to help keep me standing up, right? So I'm gonna use a little bit of weight, I have a 10 pounder here, you might need a five. I'm going to get to my edge, right? Wherever the deepest point of my stretch is, I'm gonna go there, and then I'm gonna come back about 20% from there, cool? First thing I'm gonna do right away is contract my quads. That is activating the reciprocal inhibition of the hamstring, so they have to relax to allow my quads to contract, right? So right away, it's letting me sink even deeper into its cage, right? We're trying to tame the lion. Muscles need to be seduced. No weird shit there, it's just a word. Next, I can, for a period of time, contract the hamstring. So now I'm thinking about driving my legs down straight into the floor. I'm essentially doing like a back extension or a, a, a hip extension in the most general sense of the term. So I'm driving my heels down into the floor. I'm contracting my hamstrings under load, right? So I'm not training passive mobility. I'm training active mobility. I'm training these muscles to work in a lengthened position. And this is the mobility we need to squat and to deadlift, right? Third, fourth point to a stretch. Again, keeping our um, breathing and bracing. If you wanna maximize a stretch, you can always add a twist to it. So let's say in a simple straddle, this is my favorite example to stretch with, I can twist my body and grab, not the knee, but above or below, right? And now I'm adding lats into the equation, right? I'm following that chain along since the uh, hamstring synergize with the glutes, the low back and the lats, if I get my hamstring pinned in a stretch and then I add a lat to the stretch, I'm then lengthening a much longer chain and finding how that whole family is connected, right? And again, it's gonna take time, right? Brings me to my fourth or fifth point. Each stretch is going to require, you know, around two minutes per stretch. You know, if you're doing single limb, it's per side. Two minutes to create a soft tissue change. So. Sitting in your stretch for 30 seconds, 10 seconds at the beginning of your workout, it might feel good for a moment, but we're not actually creating any change. Fifth or sixth point, we try not to stretch cold unless you really know what you're doing. You want your muscles to be awake, full of blood, and willing to go through those ranges of motion. Again, like I said, we're creating, we're trying to change our structure here, so we're creating a little bit of damage, and we're relaxing the muscle in turn. So this is not something you want to do before a max attempt. And again, unless you know what you're doing, you know your body, be careful. We can do something like a ballistic stretch to warm up. I'm still cold, I just walked in, I'm about to work out, but if I were to come into a squat right away, 
breathing and bracing, I'm bouncing around, I'm not passively sitting into the stretch, I'm activating, right? And this is a position that's comfortable for me. You guys might get stuck here. We could still do little bounces. It's perfectly fine. We can add twists and all of that good stuff. So we covered straddle. So I wanted to cover a few, like a few basic stretches as well in this video. So we covered straddle, we covered frog. The third main hip stretch I love is the couch. This is another way to drill home the concept of reciprocal inhibition. So let's say I chill in this position for at least one minute. Next things I can do are for 10 to 30 seconds, I can drive my leg, essentially doing a leg extension into the box. So I'm contracting again the muscles that I'm trying to stretch. When I relax, the nervous system again lets me in a little deeper and then I can relax for a moment and I can slowly then begin to contract the hamstring. This is cramp city for some people, only because the nervous system needs time to learn how to send information through that pathway. Uh, if you do it for long enough, eventually you won't be cramping. But again, I'm thinking about pulling my heel off the box. Some of you that have followed me for a long time have seen me do this type of stuff. Clients have definitely had you do some of this type of stuff. So I'm doing that for a while. I'm telling this muscle to relax, the muscle I'm trying to stretch by contracting his opposing muscle group, right? So that's another way to drill home the concept of reciprocal inhibition. I sound smart because it's a huge word, but it's a very, very simple concept. The world of science likes to overcomplicate things. I'm here to make it simple for you. I'm here to give you what you need to get better. I'm here to help you grow stronger. So as always, if you have any requests, any comments, please feel free to reach out. I'm always listening, I'm always responding. I'm here for you and I look forward to sharing more information. Let me know if you liked it. I will see you next time.